Howdy everybody, it's Elliam Henderson. And today we're discussing whether we should travel by road or by air. So uh, here's some kind of pros list of traveling by air or traveling by ground. If we travel by air, uh, that's more of a benefit for long distance travel. It's cost effective on long distance travel. Uh, it saves a ton of time. Um, it's hands-free. You don't have to be actively driving uh, or hire a driver if the company was going that route. Uh, you're able to do other things while sitting on the aircraft. Uh, also, it's an improved quality of life on repeated trips. I mean, nobody wants to be driving, you know, three months out of the year or whatever it's going to be, depending on those trips. Uh, for ground travel, it's more beneficial for short distance travel. Uh, it's cost effective on short distance travel. Uh, it's simplistic. There's no driving to the airport, waiting in TSA lines, uh, gates changing on you and all that. Uh, it says save money on shorter trips and the travel is hands-on. So if we were to drive ourselves, uh, then that's more complicated. People have to be paying attention where they're going. So some considerations for air travel. Uh, commercial terminals are hectic, full of TSA headaches. Uh, there's possibilities of delay for weather, maintenance issues, and other factors uh, to consider is time uh, spent driving to the airport, uh, waiting through TSA lines, waiting through boarding lines, uh, walking through the airport. Uh, and it's also uncomfortable depending on if we're flying economy, business, or first class, which all cost a different amount of money. Uh, picture in the middle is a good representation of if you've ever been stuck on a plane between a couple crying babies, it's, it's no fun. Uh, nobody likes to do that. And then for considerations for ground travel, uh, it, ground travel's no good either. I mean, you got traffic issues, you got accidents, construction, uh, the interstate system is really a mess when it comes to all that. Uh, it can cause massive standstills, which add hours onto your travel, especially if you're going through big cities during rush hour, like DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas is a mess to drive through during rush hour. Uh, gas fees is another thing. We're experiencing super high gas fees right now. Uh, I think right now in Hawaii, the gas is like 460 a gallon uh, for regular unleaded. Uh, lodging is another thing con to consider. We're adding more time having to travel, uh, drive in those travel events. So if we have to pay for overnight hotels for them, X, Y, and Z, that is no good either. Uh, and it's also incredibly dangerous when compared to air travel. Uh, there's more fatalities every year on the ground than there is in the air. I believe airlines have the best travel history ever to date. Uh, so here is comparison of some numbers of traveling from Nashville, Tennessee to Oklahoma. Uh, so for the airlines, it's about 446 miles. Uh, that's from Nashville to Tulsa. Uh, the average flight is four hours, uh, not including TSA times, time spent at the airport or drive times, none of that. So in reality, it'd be a little higher. Uh, then the drive from Tulsa to Afton is roughly 1.2 hours. It also costs tolls if you're going on the toll road. Uh, the estimated total trip, in reality, the number is probably higher, uh, is 15.6 hours. Uh, with a relative cost of $1,680. Uh, that's for basic airline tickets and, yeah, uh, paying for tolls, which is the number, again, is probably higher, uh, depending on when you're traveling and what class on the airlines you're traveling. For the car, uh, directly from Nashville to Afton, Oklahoma, is 536 miles. The drive time is 8.2 hours one way. Um, the total cost for, I did the numbers off renting a car, uh, is $2,100. That's not including the cost of fuel. Uh, that's just strictly renting a Chevy Suburban for a week long trip. Uh, estimated total trip is 18 hours. That's not including overnights or anything like that. Obviously, nobody is going to drive eight hours there and back in one day uh, for a 30 minute business meeting. This doesn't make sense. Uh, so, I also threw in the compared to on demand travel. So, assuming we did go ahead and purchase that TVM 930, uh, we could fly directly from Nashville to Grove, Oklahoma, which is the closest 
um, airport that the TDM could land at. Uh, and the numbers below are based off a thousand mile round trip. So uh, in reality, it's more like a 850 or 900 nautical mile round trip, but the numbers work good for a thousand mile round trip. Uh, the time for that round trip would be three hours and 10 minutes. Uh, we'd be cruising at a true airspeed of 316 knots. Uh, we had a relative direct cost of $1,828 and at an altitude of 2009, or I'm sorry, 29,000 feet. Uh, so in conclusion, in my mind, driving makes zero sense. Uh, it's not worth the attributed cost or the time delays, the hassle, uh, and also the danger attributed to it. Uh, airline travel is, is a big maybe. Uh, kind of depends where we're going, the class we're flying, and the distance, also the amount of times we're making that trip. Um, so between the two, I would choose the airline uh, just to save on overnights and all that. And generally it's a little cheaper if you fly economy and you can find good deals on tickets. Um, but overall, on-demand travel would make the most sense here, uh, especially for our company and its growing needs. We'd save massive amounts of time, uh, money, quality of life for our employees, and again, less overnights. Uh, so thank you so much. Bye.